Hello and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We got a nice crowd uh, for introduction to irrigation. Uh, my name is Brian Frederick, and Jeremiah Farmer will be giving the presentation today, going over some of the tools that LandEffects has to offer, um, as well as an introductory course to um, irrigation with LandEffects. So, Remember that we have a questions box uh, that you're more than welcome to send in questions and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, and uh, if your question either can't be answered by me or uh, is a good question, then I'll pass it on to Jeremiah to answer live in the webinar. So remember that. Um, but yeah, so without any further ado, I'll hand it over to Jeremiah who's going to um, hopefully deliver an awesome webinar. I think this is going to be a really good one that a lot of people are going to be able to use in the future. So um, take it away, Jeremiah. Excellent. Well, thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Um, can I have uh, hopefully a full house here? We've got um, over 100 people signed up, and a lot of you are still filing in. Um, but we're going to kind of get going and uh, I'm getting an indication from Forrest that I don't sound as optimal as I should, so I'm adjusting my microphone ever so slightly. So uh, just get that. Okay, trying different headsets here because we want a good audio experience for you guys. So hopefully this is good. Um, so getting started with irrigation and uh, what um, we are going to cover today. Um, the important thing that I will stress with this um, is uh, where to find help um, because particularly as I was uh, you know coming up with what we're going to cover I was realizing you know when we do a full irrigation training uh, that, that covers about four hours uh, we have less than one hour today and there might be you know dozens of you asking questions um, so um, let's do uh, you know Feel free to, to ask any questions. Um, we'll, we'll get to the ones we can. But the important thing um, I'm going to stress today is I want to give you um, a general overview of irrigation. Uh, I'm going to be skipping some things. I'm going to be breezing over some things. I want to be sure to get to as much as I can. And this is going to be recorded. And I'm going to be showing you where to get help uh, when you try to follow up later. So um, you know, don't try to, for instance, follow along while I'm going. Um, you know, try to take this in, because <laughs> uh, and just make sure you see all the things I'm showing. Um, we're going to cover the theory. We're going to go into schematic, and then I'm going to get into size and scheduling, and then get into individual equipment and all the other kind of general tools. Um, so um, that's basically what it's going to cover. And uh, again, if you have any questions about this or anything, we are very easy to get a hold of. So please, um, I'm going to now get this out of the way and jump right in. Um, so uh, uh, first things first is, um, uh, there are second things, because we already did the first thing. Second thing, second, um, in prepping for this, one thing that was interesting was I was looking up the oldest archived version of land effects that we have here. Uh, and dates back to 1999, and so that was a little blast from the past. And uh, interesting, you know, you may not know that, um, but I'll, some of the capability I'm showing you today was developed uh, in uh, 97, 8, and 9. Uh, that's 15 years of development of this irrigation system. Um, so more of that development literally happens every day, like literally today. Today, as I was prepping for this, I added a couple of lines of code. Uh, that's how we roll. So um, um, do please give us your ideas and questions on things because it's just going to keep getting better. So uh, 15 years in, we still haven't thought of everything. Um, I am inside of my AutoCAD, and I have my uh, plan mocked up in paper space on how I want to do my sheet. I want to do an irrigation plan. Um, this is the very first thing you should do, really, with anything. Uh, those of us who learned ink on Mylar, obviously, you needed to make a decision on the scale of your plan before you drew one symbol. Uh, but uh, those of us with CAD seem to forget that that is still the absolute first thing you should do. You should do your sheet mock-up. Now you have an idea 
are you going to be putting your schedule here or is the schedule going on a different sheet because you're using small sheets? That's going to impact things. Everything is going to be coming off of what paper you're aiming for and then just simply set your land effect scale to match that viewport scale. That's it. So now uh, all the irrigation equipment I'm going to be placing into the drawing is going to be scaled perfectly for this viewport here even though obviously I'll be in model space and things are at the size of the site. So I've got my sheet mocked up. Where do I go? Well, I'm going to give you a very, very quick rundown of where irrigation is and where our help is. Uh, you should have a pull-down menu for irrigation. And uh, this pull-down menu is going to cover pretty much everything. It correlates with the toolbar. So uh, let me also kind of pull this toolbar down so you can see that. And I'm going to turn on the place emitter toolbar, which is fired from that, and then the place piping toolbar, which is fired from that. Um, this is the grand total of all irrigation functions. Uh, there's a couple of flyouts uh, right there and right here. Um, but this is the entire irrigation system, and it's important to appreciate the logic as we designed this. The primary uh, irrigation toolbar has the administrative functions and schedules here. Here's the manager. The top left button of any land effects toolbar is the overall manager. You can always feel safe going there, and there's an overall help button. There will also always be an overall help button at the bottom of any menu that will set you straight and generally correlates with the preferences um, because you're going to want to kind of start with preferences you want some help you want and we didn't want to put the help first so the help is last um, the irrigation toolbar generally reads left to right in the process of doing a plan so that means we have the manager and then with the manager of course the administrative things obviously you do a schedule last sort of a thing but all that belongs right here. Um, we didn't want to put schedule functions all the way at the right edge. Um, so, you know, like I said, generally left to right. But the left to right progress is placing emitters. Anything that anything that outputs water is the way to put it. So here is my place emitter toolbar that spawned from that. My spray heads, my special heads, my drip stuff, my tools for placing heads. Um, then placing valves, placing equipment, placing drip equipment, schematic irrigation, which I'm going to show first. And actually, we were just having a talk. Um, actually, I think we're going to move the schematic irrigation button to read more appropriately left or right. We're going to put it right between manager and emitter is uh, what the vote is so far. But um, I'm going to show you that next so you'll see, get a feel for that. Um, circuiting is adding up all the GPM. Uh, irrigation is a dance of flow and pressure, but uh, the the flow is handled by this little circuit calculator, which does, in case you're wondering, that dates to 1999. Pretty cool. Um, and then piping. This piping will turn on the piping toolbar. So you got to connect everything with pipe. You got to size the pipe. You got to annotate. You got to make changes. But that's the entire breadth of the irrigation system. And as you're learning it, note from the uh, pull down menu very much that similar order. The manager, the administrative functions, the emitter, those other buttons, schematic irrigation, the circuiting, and then all the stuff that's on the piping toolbar just because it's very, very important. Where do I size lateral pipe? So on. Things like that. Um, I'm going to jump into the help. And like I said, the help is super important. Um, you can always go in here. You can search for anything you want grab this and print it. If you don't already have the Irrigation Getting Started Guide PDF, download that and print it. Uh, looks great on a color printer. Um, please find a color printer to print it on. Um, that's going to help you out immensely, but it's also going to cover pretty much the key thing, a lot of key things I'm doing, but it's going to go up more in depth actually into some configuration things that I'm not going to cover. Um, here are the standard sections of irrigation. I'm going to start out with theory and terminology. Um, what is irrigation? Well, it is putting down water. We are faking rainfall. So we're trying to fake rainfall uh, in an in a, um, equal distribution. 
and there are rules of thumb. This is another great download. This um, I'm going to pull it up and show you things like what um, a water meter can do. Because basically, what this rules of thumb does, which actually it needs to say, I think, a little more, and we'll update it. But what the rules of thumb is helps you with is your overall determinations. So you've been given this site, right? This project right here. I need to irrigate this site. Well. How? How am I going to do that? I have a certain area of size, I have certain types of plants, I need to water, and I have a certain watering window in which to do it in. So that comes to a lot of these calculations here, which is what size of a water meter can you use, um, your plant factors, what sort of biotranspiration rate you're getting in your area, what sort of equipment you may or may not be able to use, what sort of soil you have is going to come into play, um, right down in here. Um, all this comes together. Um, are we going to be pulling all this into a really nice little live web page where you can pick these and it will calculate things? Yes. Uh, good question. Thank you for asking that. Um, so look for that in the near future. Right now, um, there's a lot of moving targets on here. That's why it's been a little easier for us to maintain as uh, just this single uh, PDF download. Um, so uh, that is the first place to start. And as I close that, I don't know why. Um, is um, you know the basic theory and terminology. The next theory and terminology I want to dive into, whoops, um, is some of these other concepts. Um, irrigation theory is uh, a little boring. I want to show this instead, which is a little more exciting. Um, basic equipment definitions. Um, some of these things um, have different terms uh, in different parts of the world and such. Um, so, uh, for instance, uh, a backflow device um, can be called a double check valve, is a great example, right? Um, uh, things like that. So, um, but this is a basic outline of obviously here's a schematic irrigation plan on the left, and here's placing some individual heads on the right, and we're going to be accomplishing this right now. Uh, but this is helpful to know what these different terms are, and then the documentation goes further into these things, um, giving examples of them. Uh, to determine what you what equipment you want to use uh, as a technology person, I, I am just I really enjoy irrigation because it's constantly what's the latest and greatest little little gizmo that's putting out water. It's a lot of fun in that regard. Um, so uh, and then also determining your water source. Um, I wanted to I think this is no you see this is the one that's just boring. A lot of text there. A lot of, um, the, the intention of this whole theory and terminology section, by the way, is it, honestly you could be starting from ground zero and I see some people in the audience from, for instance, Cal Poly and some other universities and, and you may, this may be your super introduction to irrigation. I would definitely recommend taking a, an hour and reading this whole theory and terminology section um, and, and you'll really get appreciation for all the true theory of irrigation. Um, I want to show this graphic here which is what we're going to get into fairly quick, which is, you know, we are served uh, from a municipal water source usually, and then there's a, that tees off as a service line, and then there's usually a water meter at the point of service. Um, so the length of that service line, this vertical incline distance to where the water meter is located, the type of water meter, the class of that pipe, all depends on how much water I actually have available right here. That's very, very important because uh, that all matters because you need to have a proper pressure distribution all the way down to the last little sprinkler. That's what where the that's all going to come to play. So you do need to get that information. Um, and that's not there's no default uh, pressure. Uh, we deal with a lot of people. For instance, uh, I hear there's really bad pressure in Hawaii. Interestingly enough, I imagine it's because it's um, actually rather flat. And they can't get anything up high, but um, you know, so they do a lot of low pressure irrigation in Hawaii. Um, other places, without fail, they always put in a pump station. Um, but uh, pressure, pressure, pressure um, is is the nature of the game, and that's where we're really going to help. So um, I've laid out the toolbars, showed you the the basics of the help. 
Um, I'll check in with Brian real quick to see, are there any questions already, Brian? Uh, nope, we don't have any questions yet. So remember to submit your questions uh, as we continue throughout. But uh, so far, I think it's been great. So continue on. All right, excellent. So um, I'm going to dive into model space here, and here's this plan. Um, obviously, uh, for the purposes of helping to skip us along a little bit, I have uh, done quite a bit already. So uh, I'm still going to show you um, how this all works. I just don't need to lay out the entire plan. So I'm going to do this for a area over here. Um, this is utilizing our schematic irrigation tool, which, as I said, is right here on the toolbar. Um, but a look for a future update for it to probably shift over to about here. Um, there was, anyway, like I said, I, 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 well, those things bug me. I stare at it and I think it's in the wrong place. But anyway, <laughs> our decision at the time, in case you're wondering, was schematic irrigation was very much schematic, kind of looking at GPM calculations. So we felt it did uh, exist best next to the circuit GPM calculator. We thought the two were two flavors of the same thing. Uh, the more it's been in use, the more I'm realizing schematic irrigation is more like an emission device, thinking of it as placing this thing that's putting down water and the calculation is secondary. So that's why it now doesn't make sense to me here. So sorry to belabor that. Um, but what I have is obviously every type of irrigation equipment if I click on schematic irrigation, um, it should populate with all these defaults. Um, every type of irrigation equipment has a certain precipitation rate that if at standard triangular head coverage, head-to-head -head coverage, has a manufacturer stated uh, precipitation rate which they uh, aim for. Um, you know, depending on wind, depending on how perfectly you're able to lay them out at triangular spacing, whether the radiuses were changing and some get closer together, that precipitation rate can alter a little. But you do have, of course, if I was to lay out, for instance, any one of these, all the little turf heads in this area down in here, depending on how they're laid out, it would have an aggregate average precipitation rate across that entire area. So what schematic irrigation lets us do is lets us say, well, let's start with that. I want um, very much first, I want a 10% submittal. I want an overall, and I want also something a lot more friendly to calculate what sort of size of point source I need. Do I need a point of connection that's going to be just some giant point of connection? Am I going to put in a well pump? Can I use municipal water meter? I need to make a determination on the source, on my water source. And our schematic irrigation tool lets you do all this inside of AutoCAD and it lets you reuse a lot of the effort that you're going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply draw a polyline. And I'm going to say that over here we're planning on, we're going to have some additional screening shrubs and stuff. I'll just draw, you know, I don't know, some, whoops, that was a, that was a, uh, bring him in. Okay, so there's going to be some additional area over here that will be some uh, additional uh, shrub planting, get some buffer screening or something, right? Um, and I want to apply a schematic area over here. So I'm just going to actually grab, you know, I could go through these and find, oh, I want that to be shrub rotator uh, like these here. Or I could also, I'm just going to grab the first one and show you something cool. I'm just going to drop that guy there. That happened to be shrub area for drip emitters at a high density. Um, but I wanted to jump to one of these other tools on the place head toolbar. Near the end is match properties. And what I can do is I can say match properties and click this one and click that one. Um, so that's a very handy tool. For instance, let's say um, right away, actually, well, let me go ahead and do a flow total because. Obviously, I've placed one or more schematic areas. Um, one of the things I might want to do right away is from my schematic tool again. I can stay in here for quite a bit, but you can see already I'm needing to access tools and other toolbars like that match properties button. Um, but I have the relevant circuiting tools on my schematic dialog box, such as doing a total. And so I can drop that in. And what this tells me is there's my flow totals. And so um, it tallied up 800 plus uh, GPM, and um, I 
did already establish a water source um, as I was testing some things out. If I didn't have a water source, this bottom part wouldn't be here. This is not counting, by the way, how many valves are in the drawing. This is estimating how many valves you would need because that is your water source. Um, because this is the level of where we're at, and that's why this is just text and sitting there so that I can kind of refer to it and maybe start deciding how many valves I'm going to need and such. For instance, this one here, it's a long area, but only 25 plus GPM estimated. Um, it's up to me on am I going to be serving that with one valve or two valves. Um, that's the decision I need to make, and that decision depends on your source. Um, but let's just say all I wanted to do was lay some of these out and just get that overall total GPM number. So now I can go back and start uh, having that discussion with the client, with the landscape architect, whoever. And maybe the first thing they go is, you know, the agency is never going to approve these non-athletic use turf areas. That's just very 1980s, right? So let's use my match properties button on those. Or as well, um, or actually, I'm going to go ahead and just delete these because I wanted to do a uh, whoops, <laughs> say click on the wrong button. I wanted to do a drip line area, which I don't have in here. Um, I want to say, you know what, we're going to not do turf in front, we're going to do shrub drip line, a very kind of standard 0.6 uh, GPH emitter at 80 inches on center. Um, so if you were to lay in some nice uh, drip line either uh, above grade or below grade. Um, I'm going to place that guy and um, so you can see that calculated his uh, estimated GPM, which is certainly a lot less, but you know, mainly because I, I don't need to put down as much water as I would as if that was a turf area. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and drop in uh, oops, this other one over here. And then for the maybe the, the third one, um, I can use my match properties button for. So from here to here. Um, so I've made some changes to that very easily and now I can uh, go back to my schematic irrigation and do another flow total and see. And, and again this was by design so that I can very, have these multiple ones in here as I'm doing exactly what I'm doing, kind of doing some trade-off. That was nearly 900 GPM uh, and I trimmed 50 GPM just like that. Um, and also save the client a, a, a bit of money by not having these turf areas, which are just going to need a lot more maintenance uh, than some nice uh, drought-resistant shrubs. Um, so anyway, I've placed some schematic areas. I've done a total. Uh, you know, where do we go from there? Um, so I've been, I've had a tool where I can do these trade-off studies, and, and that's a key. But to go any further, I do need to, for particularly for this area that I has placed, I do need to make that decision on valves, um, because if I'm going to do any sort of watering schedule, that depends on how many valves are running. Um, I obviously can't have one 900 GPM valve. I, I suppose someone makes a 900 GPM valve. Um, but that would, would be irresponsible. Um, we are dividing this up, uh, having different valves serve different areas. Um, so that's where I'm going to need to go into my irrigation manager. And under valves, I already added uh, a valve. I added this Rainbow PEB valve. Um, and I also had, have already added a quick coupler. Um, I'm going to just add another valve just to show you that process if I click New. Um, I get a list of possible valves. Um, perhaps I was, you know, considering having a master valve to turn everything on and off at once. Um, and I can look and I see a list of manufacturers, and I'm able to pick a manufacturer and see a list of series. I'm able to look at their catalog information um, and pick one of these these guys here. And I want a uh, uh, normally oh, these are all normally closed. Usually I'd want to normally open one, um, so I just kind of randomly picked this for purposes, and so there's that valve. Um, and so I've added that to the project. We're going to get more into the irrigation manager later. I wanted to show just the minimum of just getting of where the valve comes from. But in this case, I can click Show Components and remind myself that Rainbow PEB. I can also click on View Data, and it'll bring up his web page. Um, to get more information on him. So all this information is right at my fingertips, uh, including, I'm not sure where they have their 
uh, there we are, the old pressure loss chart. This is also all built into land effects too. So uh, where you're going to need to take a heed of this is right here is at what pressure is nominal. And this is something where, okay, well, there is that purple area, but you see there's a lot of crossover. So, um, for instance, if you, uh, let's pick a good nominal one, 30, 30 GPM. 30 GPM, if you have the pressure, you could have a one-inch valve at 30 GPM. Why not? I mean, as long as you have that additional two pounds of pressure, you, that saves the client some money. So that's a decision for the designer. Uh, there's nothing Land Effects can do here. I mean, if anything, Land Effects would pick this because that's less pressure, but that's more expensive. And so uh, typically money is more important than other things. So um, that's a tough calculation to make for a computer. So that's where the designer is going to come in, making decisions like that. And I'll show you exactly that. So let's just say, for sake of argument, I decide I want two valves to serve my new schematic area here. Um, remember, right after placing emitter, which was this toolbar, the next button was my place valve. Uh, there's my PEB valve, and I've got my three sizes. Um, I'm going to pick the one inch and a half, even though if I'm doing two, um, I could probably have the inch. So, oh, wait, I have keyboard commands. Um, I have my Q and E buttons, and you can see if I hit Q and E, I go through my three sizes of valve. Um, mildly undocumented feature, just thought I'd show you that one. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and say one valve will be kind of more up there and one will be more here. And I want to connect them, and connecting them would be piping, which is that last button to bring up my piping toolbar. We run uh, from mainline pipe from the point of source, where I haven't yet defined that. Um, and that runs around and then connects the valves. Valve is what transition from that constantly charged main line to lateral line. On the piping toolbar, my lateral line, I can click on the valve. The yellow highlight means it saw the valve. I can hit F8 to snap automatically at every 45, or I can just leave it off, um, and I can just come in here and just end it anywhere in there. Um, and now I can immediately check with my highlight station and I can click on the valve and that area highlighted so definitely it thinks it's connected. Um, and even though it's one big area, just like my giant turf area over here, I can have multiple valves going into the same schematic area and then it's just going to divide it up equally. Certainly in this case I bet the south valve would probably have uh, fewer GPM than the top. Um, but it's you know not going to be that overzealous. Um, it's just going to divide that GPM. Um, while I'm here, um, I kind of like to call out my valves early. That's personal preference. Right after placing it, it just helps me find them after the fact. I can click on my valve. It grabbed the next available valve number, and then so I can place that call out, and then how long do I want the leader line, or I can right-click, to just put a number next to the valve, or I can hit escape for neither of those. But I'm going to click for that, and then just to show you the difference with this next one, um, I'm going to place him um, here. Well, actually, I'll, what I'll do, I'll put him here, and then I'm going to right click for no arrow, and you'll see what it did is it put a number 23 there. Um, and then, like I said, if I hit escape, it would just not put the 23 there. So that's more if I wanted to put this valve call out right next to the valve. Um, so um, now that I've got my valves placed and connected, because now I want to do a watering schedule. Um, I want to get my water budget so I can get my water source figured out. Um, so in order to do that, though, um, I need these are connected, but it needs to actually run the math um, because you know it can this valve run that amount of water. Um, I'm going to go ahead and connect my main line up so that that also is a good thing to do at this point, is running the main line. You'll see the magenta highlight means point in space. Yellow highlight means it clicked on the valve. So then if I just do right to here, it should be magenta because it didn't click on anything. And when I click on this valve, it should be yellow, which is great. Green, you can see, is if I was trying to snap to an existing. Those, those, that's also all in the help. 
Um, but again, anytime I'm piping, use Highlight Station. I'll click on the main line this time. And I can see where that main line is running. Um, that Highlight Station is absolutely your friend. Um, similarly, that's Highlight. Um, the next one where we're getting to is I want to size the lateral pipes. I want to take the demand and bring it back to the valve to make sure the valves can run the appropriate GPM at the pressure that was selected. So that would be sizing my lateral pipes, but before I can do that, I really should verify my laterals. And right there I get a message saying heads not connected or circled in yellow. And I look, and if I really had a, if I still couldn't find it, I suppose I could isolate that layer, but I can see uh, one of these little schematic areas here that was placed earlier. So let me just connect from this pipe here straight down into that area there. And so now if I go ahead and verify my lateral pipes, no one piped heads. I don't want to worry about apparent intersections right now. Um, so all of my areas are connected to valves. Um, I can do my lateral size lateral pipes, but um, that is dependent on what? Well, I went back to my irrigation manager and I'm clicking on pipe data. It depends on the class of pipe chosen. So, uh, you know, again, there's no default class of pipe. Um, so, you know, you need to make a decision on what class of pipe you want, how fast you want the water to go, how much you want the pressure to vary um, in the system, what minimum size pipe you want, and how many other sizes you want to use. The defaults are pretty standard for in here, but there, again, there's no default for class of pipe. You're going to want to research pipe a bit um, and pick an appropriate class. We're only worrying about lateral right now. So that is the class of pipe and the parameters that are going to be used when I click on size lateral pipes and I'm going to right click to size all. So that quickly, and didn't have to do much, but you can see like for instance my two new guys here, it just split that GPM perfectly across those two valves. And if I was to even use my um, edit equipment button and click on a valve, I have an analysis button where I can see uh, even though it's a schematic area, um, it does have additional information. For instance, there is that loss to the valve. Remember, that really matches up pretty well with that chart we were looking at, that one-inch valve with 15 GPM. So it's right off the chart. We have the exact loss to the valve. Um, I have some estimated loss through fittings, and it have look at that friction loss. Even though I didn't pipe, there would normally be you know, nearly, what, 100 plus feet of pipe to go in here, um, if not more. So it estimated an amount of friction loss, and it estimated high, because that's a fair amount of friction loss, um, because I want to make this overall assessment of how much pressure I need, and it also reminds me of that with water moving at 5 feet per second. Um, so um, it's given me all those numbers, so that means that at this point um, I can do a lot of things. Um, I'm going to run an overall irrigation schedule, and again, all these schedules are always going to be found right underneath the manager. I'm going to do an overall schedule, and I, I don't care about the equipment, actually. I want to show you just uh, the schematic areas here at the bottom. So I'm not going to worry about the valves. We're going to come back to another irrigation schedule. And you can see how these schematic areas appear in the schedule, where they have their overall square footage, their estimated precip rate, the pressure they're going to need, their total GPM then, a cost per square foot if they have a cost per square foot established. That is you know, a, a, a number for you to tweak with if you wish so that you can look at the cost of installation. But I also want to look at the cost of water. That's why I wanted to size all my pipes because underneath uh, the schedule, I have a valve schedule which I don't need right now. I wanted to do the watering schedule. So for a watering schedule, I need to determine how much water I want to put down, and you can see it's inches a week, and then which days I want to water. So for And it's by type, or if I wanted to set my zones individually, that's all the individual valves. That's going to take forever. I want to go by type. Again, look at how fast I can move with this schematic irrigation tool. So my shrub drip line, maybe he needs to put down one inch a week, you know, and that can run several days. Um, and again, back to that rules of thumb, that's where you would establish how much water you need to lay down each week. Um, so um, I'm going to just, for sake of speeding this along, I'm going to just be clicking almost randomly here and just kind of putting 
two inches a week on certain days and uh, just to get some numbers in here I, I don't want to slow us down too much we're already taking up a, a quite a bit of time here um, and my turf spray area also say two inches a week only one day there um, and uh, I'm going to do individual days on the report so you can see what that looks like and so here's my watering schedule which is very handy and one of those options I don't know if you saw in the watering schedule is I can send it to a spreadsheet and when it gets sent to a spreadsheet all of these cells will be live and so you can tweak it um, and so that's a very handy tool as well um, but for instance you can see what this can be used for is real quickly and again this is at a schematic level I'm able to say well it sure looks like I have an issue here on Thursday and Friday I don't know if if I'm running one valve at a time for instance is that gonna fit in my watering window um, and then my gallons a day um, at a peak day my gallons a week is that within my water budget um, this is now very quickly I was able I'm able to have this discussion with the client with the agency with the landscape architect and decide how we want to irrigate this area but also what sort of source is necessary and what sort of controller is necessary maybe I need a two wire control system so that I can be operating more than one valve at a time um, that's the sort of decision you're going to need to make and this is where I can make these sorts of decisions um, I let's just fast forward let's Joe go back into my irrigation manager to my source data here is where I can establish that source and again with source there's no default I had already plugged in these water meter numbers earlier this morning you can see I had you know I'm a, let's just I'm I have a two inch water meter cranked up to hundred percent safe flow because I don't care if the if I blow out the water meter but that's a discussion for you to have with the agency they might get mad if you're doing that um, there is no default for static pressure this is a very important one when setting up your source you have to indicate how much PSI is available it could be zero that's fine you, you can say there's zero but you'll be negative that means you need a, a booster pump of some sort um, and then we put this here is this is a good one is maybe you put this person's phone number here you know um, where you know he's the one that you call he'll come out in his van and he'll check the pressure and tell you what the pressure is available at the at the meter and then you put that number in right here but you can see that's the number that he tested but then you know that's tested at the street and then to get through the service line get through the water meter I only have 83 PSI available um, and then I have a place button here um, there's two ways to place a water meter it's right there in that dialog box which is handy otherwise it is with other auxiliary equipment in the uh, place equipment button um, you'll see here's my water meter there as well um, so I'm gonna drop in my water meter call it M for meter that's fine and connect it with mainline to the already I've already picked and placed a backflow and done the other piping as you can see I you know we're already at 30 minutes in so I'm trying to move us along a little bit um, again I use my highlight station you can see blue is the source very clear I can see where my water's running now that I have my main line run my water meter there now I can size the main line because the next thing I want to do is I want to go to the next step beyond my watering schedule um, and so I'm gonna to need to size the main line because if I'm gonna be looking at maybe running more than one valve at a time it depends on how they're piped how they're connected um, it's not just any two valves at the same time it depends like this long row of valves here it probably can only pick one of these at a time and it's going to pick a valve over here that all depends on how it's laid out so let's say let's size the main line um, there's my size main line button on the piping toolbar uh, but again before I do something like that I would want to verify it there's my verify button um, unpiped valves oh look at that so now I can take a look and see uh oh because before I size the main line I might want to know if I have unpiped valves uh, in this case that's my quick coupler that I placed this morning and if I, I could look through and notice it's just the three quick couplers which are not going to affect the sizing of the main line so that's fine I'll just continue so I'm going to go ahead and size my main line um, I will do a single valve operating at a time um, and I have my flow but again let me hit cancel just to 
uh, jump back. I'm sure someone was thinking this. Telepathically gave me the message back in my irrigation manager. Remember my pipe data. Um, I didn't double check. Oh, okay, for my main line, I'm using one class of pipe. I'll use schedule 40. Yeah, I'll run a default five feet a second and minimum size and what size I want. So again, maybe I want to use inch and a half as my minimum main line size. That's where that setting is. But I've confirmed what I want to be used when I size my main line, and that's all saved with the project. That irrigation manager is here's all the stuff in my project specific to this project, um, including that pipe uh, information because that can vary. So now let me go to size my main line. I want one valve operating at a time. Just see what that does. This too will remind me of the unconnected um, items, but I know they're only quick couplers. I'll continue anyway. And it says pressure has been exceeded. That's not good. Um, and it'll ask, do I want to reduce the velocity? Well, it was five feet a second. That's pretty fast. So let me just say, yeah, go ahead. Reduce the velocity. See what you can do. So it dropped it down to 4.75. And that worked. 4.75 did work. So that's interesting. I'm pretty squeaky close, and the difference between 4.75 and 5 feet per second is, is not very much at all. But somewhere there must have been a pipe that got larger in size because at a lower velocity, pipes need to be larger. Um, but that equated to less uh, loss. So you can see here's that critical station. Here's all the numbers come together. So this means I can also, for my reports, place my critical analysis. Let's see how he looks. Almost fit in there nicely. Um, I'll just go ahead and delete both of these. So my critical analysis tells me right there at the top when these numbers were generated, because if I go and change things, these numbers might not necessarily be accurate. So I have to resize the main line um, if I'm going to go and be moving valves around and all that. But it reminds me of my source. It reminds me of my pressure available, um, how much pressure I actually have. Um, there's my flow. And then here's how all these numbers come together. It tells me where my critical station was, which is valve 21, needs 50 PSI. Um, it doesn't have an elevation loss. It has some loss through the uh, a friction loss through the lateral pipe, has some fittings loss that's estimated, has loss through the valve, so thus the valve needs 63 to get 50 to the last head. That's quite a jump. Um, we have loss through the main line fittings, loss through the main line, uh, no elevation loss. But then the backflow, that's crazy. That's Those things take a lot of pressure to run. So that means that um, my critical station pressure at the point of connection is 80 PSI to get that's to get 50 psi to that last head. So it's uh, this is very simply showing this is the crux of irrigation. It's pressure and flow. There's, there's you know, distance and elevation, I suppose, but really it's pressure and flow is the delicate dance. Um, if I ran out of pressure, which I did at five feet per second, but what if I, I mean, I'm pretty squeaky close, four pounds of pressure. What if I ran out of pressure? Well, that's the beauty of the schematic irrigation, is this is the time to have that freak out. Uh, do I need a booster pump? Do I need to not be putting in 50 PSI rotors and be putting in 40 PSI rotators? You know, that's the, and so then it's just a simple match properties button to change some things out and rerun my numbers. So schematic is absolutely meant to be done at a schematic level and make those sorts of overall decisions. Um, but now that I have sized my uh, main line, I can do one other really cool thing, which is my runtime schedule. And so here um, I have similar to my watering schedule, and you can see um, um, I already have some numbers in here uh, from also to speed us along. Um, it's like just my drip line doesn't. Interesting about the runtime schedule is this is more intended to interface directly with a controller and have multiple programs. So that's why I just note that this is per day. So a lot of us tend to have to look in our chart, uh, consider what the weekly rate will be, and then divide that by however many days we're running. Uh, the intention here is because this is very much like I'm actually programming the controller. And so maybe you know this is the Wednesday uh, you know, in August uh, program. 
So the hottest day of the hottest month, but I want to run two stations at a time. My drip line, I'm going to set that in minutes. I want to run that drip line for 30 minutes. I want it to run for no more than 15 minutes, and then I want it to wait at least 30 minutes before turning it back on for the remaining 15 minutes. So that's the way this interface works. So um, I can establish multiple programs if I wish. And then what I can do is I can click summary to get my graph. And so this is what it looks like. And boy, that didn't work out, did it? Just starts running. and Something's just that is clearly some numbers are way off. So let me come back to here and see. It was probably the one I just did. Running those at 30 minutes a day is probably what's killing it. Um, oh, I see. These numbers are just very, very high. The other ones, sorry. The 30 minutes is fine. Uh, 1.5 inches in a day is uh, crazy high. So I'm sorry. See, it pulled these from the other uh, values. So these are all per week numbers. And let me just drop these down so I can get something slightly more normal. Would that be helpful? Hey, Jer. i got a question here. Sure. Uh, on those values that you were just showing right there, some people were wondering if it's possible to change it from uh, how you can change it from per day, per week, and per month, if that's possible. Oh, interesting. Yeah, um, you know, per month would be very interesting. Um, uh, we do have that generally noted. What where actually the space on this dialog box is empty was intended to um, have a button for a calculator and also the option to toggle between per day, per week. And even set, we were thinking up here at the top, to set which days of the week this will apply to. That's, that is um, on the calendar to be added. Um, um, but what I want to do is just run back in here and say, well, let me just see the difference if I do four stations at a time. Um, and if I drop that in. So but you can see my GPM is not very much um, because I can only go up to that, um, you know, looks like 55 GPM. And the reason why is because that's what the main line was sized for. So let me just try resizing the main line. Oh, of course, see, I didn't size the main line for multiple valves at a time. Let's crank that baby up to 140. So now, oh, I'll need to reduce the velocity. And now it had to drop it down even more. So that's another key case in point. We've got much larger pipe. Oh, and that still didn't fit. Look at that. See, I didn't. Uh, make that through. So if I really wanted to get that less watering window, and again, this is the time to have that freak out, to have this experimentation. Do I need a booster pump? Um, do I need to call Bill Smith and <laughs> have him see, are you sure I didn't have 97 PSI available? Um, you know, um, I'm going to do it that way because this is a webinar. In real world, um, you know, there's other things I could do. I could perhaps drop the velocity of all my lateral lines, but then all those pipes are bigger. You know, um, you're, you're running that delicate dance of is it more expensive to put in a booster pump as opposed to is it more, more expensive to make all of your pipe larger? Um, and there's, uh, that's a discussion for another day. Um, I just wanted to move this presentation along and get my, see if I can get my, uh, oh there we are, 4.7, that's a little better. So now I can check these numbers again. My loss through the main line, very acceptable, two pounds. Um, that all looks good. But of course, if I actually have that pressure available at the source is another issue. Um, but now I just want to jump back over into my uh, runtime scheduler and see what four valves at a time looks like now. Oh, look at that. That's a very different curve. Now I'm peaking up to 150 GPM, and it's a symphony of valves turning on and off, up to four valves. Uh, for a five-hour watering window, that's looking a lot better. What is going on when that happens if I click on my runtime schedule and click on run times? So here's all the run times associated with that. You can see four valves turn on, and then as I said, it's a symphony of valves turning on and off until finally we, uh, you know, system ends and brrr, they're all done at the end. Um, so that was that. Um, now, uh, that was, you know, I, I used schematic because that's a great place to start for getting started. Um, but, I, but I do want to jump into showing you some, uh, you know, actually placing some things in here. Um, and I know we're, we're running right along in terms of wasting time, and I do apologize for that. Um, but one thing I want to show you is how do we transition this? 
Um, and um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type uh, laydel, and I'm just going to delete that layer and that layer, um, and say yes. And um, I can now use this plan uh, to place individual things. Um, you know, maybe I would even go so far as to uh, delete that non-plot boundary layer too. Um, so this is why it's really handy again to start with schematic is because um, I can use the same DWG. I've already got my valves sort of where I think they're going to go. Um, they're called out. The main lines run. Um, so I might even want to go ahead and now just freeze some of these other layers. Now it's even cleaner. Now it's kind of ready to go. Um, let me show you this. I'm going to use the boundary command um, to create that. That created real quick, and I like to edge these in a little when I'm doing a presentation so you can see. Um, because I deleted my non-plot ones, um, so I gotta, I need something here. And uh, but I remember these three areas. I said I wanted to be a uh, drip line. So let's do that. Again, I would go into my irrigation manager, and that's under drip. And I want a new area for drip line, which would be different than a single length of drip line. I want the area is just a hatch. And uh, here's all my manufacturers, and I'll go ahead and look at the Rainbird ones today. Um, I remember I was estimating a 618, remember that? Um, and so here's uh, some of their uh, really good, I, I do like these Rainbird drip lines, they make good stuff. Um, but there's my 61818, that's very similar to what I was uh, projecting um, with my schematic area. I want to run that at 40 PSI. So I've got that drip line. Um, let's also add some heads. Um, let's get some shrub spray heads. Um, let's again stick to Rainbird. I don't know why I'm feeling Rainbird happy today. <laughs> um, 1800 line. Here's all my model options. And again, that view data button will pop up right to their web page. So you can kind of look through and make these equipment decisions and see what you want. In this case, for my shrub pop ups, I do want a 12-inch pop-up with a pressure regulator. Um, pressure regulating is uh, uh, fast becoming a new standard, interestingly enough. Um, do I want to knock the radius down from the manufacturer? Um, that's an interesting little one there. But uh, I don't have too much time left, so I want to get us moving. So this is the manner in which I add equipment to the project. That Rainbird. Um, 1800 line, if I click on show components, it added everything. They've all been assigned symbols, even these cool ones, these SQs. I'm going to show you the SQs first because I just showed you them now. Um, my place emitter toolbar, remember, is this toolbar here, and on the far left is my selector of sprays. Um, I want to toggle to my shrub spray. I want to immediately go to my special, but this area here is what I'll show you next, but that's the other fixed arc uh, heads. Um, I want to go to special spray, because I want to show you that SQ, he's a pretty handy little guy. Um, SQ two foot full, you can see he's really handy for these sorts of areas. So um, this little planter box out here, um, you know, I might put one there, and you can see the uh, preview, actually maybe you can't see that too well. I'm going to go ahead and Make that easier to see, I'm sorry. That should be a bit easier. Let me try dropping him in again. Um, so the, the magenta is very easy to see. There, maybe that's a little easier to see. And I have my ortho turned on, so it was hard to aim. Um, but the, they're, of course, not perfectly square um, in, in actuality. Um, but uh, they're sure, these little two-foot guys are pretty cool. I think they're a lot better than like a flood bubbler, which is what people tend to put in those areas. Um, and uh, even grab the two quarter 
would be good for back in this area. And you can see I've got that little thing. Sure does fit great in these little tiny areas that architects seem to be giving us. Um, and you know that'll put out some area for the little shrubs I was thinking back there. For these three areas, I wanted that was the drip line. And on my emitter, remember anything putting out waters on this emitter toolbar. I'll go to my area for drip line. There's my shrub drip line, or I'm sorry, not shrub drip line, just drip line. And I go to place. Interesting thing with placing is it's going to line to the segment I click on. And so looking at this area, I think the drip line is going to run top to bottom. So I'm going to click on this guy here, and you can see that's the angle it was at. For this one over here, I think it's almost kind of at a 30 degree angle. So I'm going to pick right about on that curved polyline where I think that would be. And it didn't match it that exact angle. So that's uh, is something to look at. Now this one, I clicked on that straight segment and it did it. I wonder if this will now. I want to replace that. I really want it at this angle. You, you can see once I placed it, it converted it to not having arcs. So now I should have better luck with matching that angle. There we go. So that way it indicates which way that drip line is to be run. That's not actually at 18 inches between each line because that would be too uh, dense. Um, so we're just generally representing it. Now, but remember, I froze a bunch of layers here. If I turn back on uh, those lateral line layers, I can use my highlight station, and these guys are still connected. That schematic tool is saving me an incredible amount of time. So, uh, you know, look at that. Those are already connected and ready to go. I can size the lateral pipe. This is 13 GPM. That's still the old schematic number. If I size his lateral pipes, uh, it's less, which is you know great. Um, I wish it was a little closer because it should have been, but um, it'd be an interesting one. Maybe our numbers were based on different row spacing for the schematic area. But again, that's something where like when you do notice something like that, if you're using the schematic tool a lot, that was that one here. You know what? Go in and go ahead and adjust its um, values. For these, it is, it's a precip rate, so maybe the calculation we used for its average precip rate was clearly high. I mean, high is not necessarily a bad thing, but that's almost double, and, and I would like it to be a little bit closer to do my estimates. Um, so that was those. I'm going to show some other placing heads um, into this area here. Um, I have all I've added was my shrub spray, so I'll just stick with that. The next button is my radius selector. I could start with a 15, for instance. Um, I can pick an individual arc. I'm just going to show you smart arc um, because smart arc has keyboard commands. I can press key to see what or press K to see what they are, but I'm going to put my uh, fingers right on WASD, so that way I can hit Q, go up to hit Q, and I can go through my radiuses and E to go back up. So Q and E, same as with placing a valve. So um, I can look around like this. Some people like to put in these grids. So I can put in a grid at a grid spacing of say 12 feet. And it wants to know at what angle. And I'm just going to say, actually probably should be this angle right here. And I want a grid in here to see if that'll help me with laying out my heads. You can see it's kind of giving me my triangular spacing and I can sort of do that, and that might help. You know, it's 12 feet, or actually 12 feet at most between any of these points. So some people like those, and that's just a little thing I can move around or delete. Um, that's a pretty nice little tool. Um, I'm going to do my smart arc. It's um, at 15, and um, what I can do is I can just basically kind of click. I can right-click for a full, um, drop down. Maybe here should be a 12. Um, I was originally taught to first do them edge to edge and then fill in the gaps. So I don't know how everyone is taught these days. Um, so there's my fulls and then I can come in and fill in the gaps. Um, and so here should probably be, for instance, a 10, uh, maybe even a 12. Yeah, that should be a 12. Um, and I do my start arc and there's my quarter, third, half. Not a three quarter, but I want more. See where the half is. My start was in the wrong, a uh, weird place. I'm going to click right here, and you see how it nudged it. So it's really a handy tool. Um, and here I probably would jump up to a 15, uh, a half. 
um, here should probably be 15 and a quarter. I'm horrible at laying out heads, so please don't judge me. Um, anyway, so I can lay out heads that way. I'm not going to lay out any more because we got to move. Um, I want to show the last little bits of the different little tools. So I can do my circuiting. For instance, I can immediately just simply do a flow total. Well, it's not going to be very much. You already saw that. Um, I can do a zone. Even though I have turf spray selected, because um, I forgot that these are shrubs, I draw my area, I right click, it says no flow for selected head type. Maybe I meant to say shrub spray, which I did, so I say okay. Now it, snips, it slips to uh, shrub spray. So that's going to create this non-plot area indicating that's 13 GPM. That's going to help me with my circuiting um, before I get into piping. For piping, again, I already had this valve going in here. I can start from that stub even, you know, um, and draw it out and um, uh, connect this up. And again, what is your what is your number one super best friend when you're piping? That's your highlight station. Make sure these are connected, looking good. And so move that along and get them connected as such. And so now they're connected. Now, of course, I can um, 